I'm very glad to bring to the stage the director of the film, Rebecca Zotowski. Thank you for being here. I'm just going to ask a couple of questions to uh, open to discussion, and then we can uh, discuss with the audience, um, which is always the best way to, to start. Uh, I said earlier uh, that it's a movie that uh, has a lot of films. It's a very dense, um, it's, it's a very dark film also. Uh, but I would like to know I'm if you... I'm <laughs> sorry for that. <laughs> no, it's still it's time it's to escape. It's, it's a plus. It's a plus. Uh, I would like to maybe just to start uh, about the inspiration for the film that you talk about, you know, which are war and pre-war and magic and, and surrealism in a way, yeah. as well as cinema and, and making a film and the film within a film, um, among other things. So can you talk a, a little bit about the beginning and what inspired to co-wrote and direct? Okay, thank you. First, <laughs> it's like six questions, it's not one. Thank you, you first you for... You can <laughs> pick the one. <laughs> yeah, of course, I'll pick like... I'm sorry, like first, thank you very much for coming and seeing the film and staying till the end. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's still something... Thank you. It's always like something to... Like, intro, like to show the film in New York. To me, it means something. And ex especially in front of this audience. And then, as a French girl, they always like serve you wine while you are, you know, having dinner while you are singing. So I may apologize for my broken English due to the red wine, French wine they gave us. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> And like the inspiration, like it's very, especially with this film, it's very, very difficult to um, to make the like this secret path of the writing of the film. And I may may like the film is really like an original script. It's not based on any story, but it's like a mixed and a, a, like a, a collusion of two or three or four stories different. And first, maybe the inspiration was the willingness to work with actors uh, and to put them in trends to put them, like, to work with actors on the set. Because my two first films were very, very, like, low budget, and I didn't have time enough to work with the actors. So I was not sure to, to be a director and to have, like, this connection to actors. So it led to me to be interested into uh, a story, like, American Sisters, the Fox Sisters, and then maybe another medium that, that was in connection between, like, politics and medium who was uh, Victoria Woodhull. She used to be like the first woman running for presidency. It's like a very dark moment for that. And I may, and so, and she used like, she used uh, the connection with Ghost in order to be on stage and like to uh, address to people and to make them vote for her. So it was like a very, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm really sorry. And I feel very close to you. So, um, so this was like something super interesting to me. And then it led me to another connection because like one, like those uh, Fox sisters, they had been hired one year by a banker, a New Yorker banker, who wanted to be in connection with uh, his late wife in order to put like, to make speculation, which was an amazingly Hitchcockian story that I did not do, I'm sorry. And I really wanted like to be not a banker, but a producer. And fiction led me to a uh, actual a real character, a real like persona, who was called Bernard Nathan, a French one. So that's why it's a secret past and it must be like, it's a story itself, like the way we are connected to stories and why we choose that. And that's how this very weird and sick story came to me. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> you understood. Mm -hmm. So since you mentioned uh, working with the actor, it's quite an amazing cast, so do you want to talk a little bit? I think you know Natalie Portman, and maybe that's how you, Did you think about her when you were writing, or it came after? And mm. maybe Lily Rose Depp, too, and uh, especially Emmanuel Salinger, who's, I think, a great actor. We don't see a lot. And he's mostly known for Desplechin, uh, La Sentinelle. Um, he hasn't changed that much, so um, you know, physically he's very recognizable. I mean, he's older, yes. but he's... Everything became eyes. white, yeah. which is like in a David Lynch film, you know, like in Twin Peaks, when the father just like from one night to another just becomes white. It's exactly what happened to Emmanuel Saint-Lager. And he has this like Peter Lor uh, look mm -hmm. and eyes that was like really, really inspiring to me. Uh, I think that sometimes you're tricked by your unconscious. I mean, there's like a, there's a trick in your mind that makes you feel that you're not writing for someone, 
but of course you are writing for someone. I was friends with Natalie Portman for a long time because we had like a, a connection with him. <laughs> my best friend is a makeup artist <laughs> and she used to, <laughs> to be a ma the makeup artist of, uh, of Natalie Portman in Los Angeles. So it was like a big, it was really like, uh, uh, it was not, not, we were not, we were not destined to, to meet. And also it's, a, it's, I think it's connected to the fact that Natalie Portman as a Hollywoodian actress who's more than 30 years old, she knows that she has to pay attention to European films, to European directors, and to upcoming directors, even like in US or Canada, like for instance, she's working with, uh, she will work with Xavier Dolan, who's not that famous in US. And it's connected to like the, of course, he's very famous now. These but audience know him. Of course. <laughs> but I feel that, <laughs> yes, you do. But I feel that for, for um, a Hollywoodian star, it's not that, uh, you know, common. So it's connected to the, the, the smartness of this actress that she knows that she has to be close to this cinema, even if it's not like the most, the, the most mainstream or the most, you know, because she needs those parts because Hollywood doesn't give her those parts anymore. So we had this, uh, she was about to settle uh, in Paris. I knew that she was about to settle in Paris. I really wanted to work with her, but I didn't want to make an American film. I wanted to make a film in my own language and in my country, and I was very, very interested into bringing some Amer American actresses like this continent to mine and making it like a vampire a little bit. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> sorry. So, this, so she was connected very, very early to the project, even if I was not like uh, uh, consciousless writing for her, it, it happened like maybe after one or two months of writing that it was for her. And then you cast Lily Rose. And then Lily Rose, she gave me the name of Lily Rose. Actually, oh. at this time, she was like, and she's still a baby, but she was really like a baby. She was 15 years old, and she was not famous in France at all. She was living in US uh, with, the, you know, that she's the daughter of who you know and the daughter of who you know, <laughs> because like, okay. And so, and she and Natalie gave me like a, an image of Lily Rose, and she told me just like a message, like an email with mm, dot, dot, dot. And then I met her and like the casting stopped as soon as she entered the, the, the place. She was absolutely, I loved the fact that the actress herself uh, pointed the sister she could have because it's kind of like choosing her own family. And then I liked the fact that they knew both of them what was like to be famous very in, at a very early age because Natalie was in, you know, Leon when she was like 12 years old and Lily Rose Depp knew absolutely what was like fame about what was to be the center of an attention, even if you don't deserve it, like in the beginning. And uh, for all those reasons, it was also like a good balance to have the two sisters and not only the amazingly like uh, powerful economically and, and as an actress, Natalie in front of Salinger. So for all those reasons, it became pretty obvious that uh, it was this casting and not another one. It, they work really well together as sisters. So I, I think so, mm -hmm. even if they have like a, I think there's something very, like a look alike, a look alikeness, yeah. even like physically. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you think about this. We, we will, I think I'm going to ask one last question, and then we uh, we can open it up. Um, I saw the film before the American election, and then I saw it after the election, and I saw the film in different light. So you talk a lot about the war, but it's pre-war, and with this sentence at the beginning saying like, "You never know, you live in a pre-war time." And I wanted to talk to you about, you know, like the politics of the film when you were f making it. Mm. And now when you see the film, it, it's very dark towards the end. Um, I mean, we know what happened, but. Now you understand. <laughs> like when I showed in Toronto the film in September before Trump was elected, I could feel that uh, the film was very European in a way. And I could feel like a connection with European audience that maybe like in Toronto I could not rich and now I feel that uh, with like what you say and what people who saw the film here like told me pretty recently I feel that now we understood we understand we all understand what was the threat and the film you know reflected in a way I wrote this film in a very I co-wrote with this, this film with Robin Campillo who's a, also a director and he wrote um, Laurent Cantet's film who won the Palme d'Or uh, Between the Walls yeah. and maybe you saw for Eastern Boys uh, an amazing two film, years Eastern two Boys, years ago. Yeah. and The Revenants also. And, uh, and we, we wrote this film in a very, very dark time. Actually, like the two, 
You know, it's like as if the film was a shelf and, uh, and the two books, uh, uh, um, uh, like one on the left was uh, the terrible like attacks for Charlie, Charlie Hebdo. And the other one was like the day we finished uh, the shooting and it was like the party for the shooting. And it was like 13th of November, the huge attacks in Paris, like terrible attacks. And we've been stuck in the, in the place we were partying, which was like in a, in a way a terrible and very, very like meaningful way to end this film. So now I feel better. I'm sorry to be so dark tonight. <laughs> and uh, hi, <laughs> like maybe you want to have like a good glass and maybe have dinner. But it's just that uh, I was very, very connected to, the, uh, to this idea that we never know that we are in a very, very peaceful moment just before it, it's becoming dark. And I feel we were experiencing that in Europe at this time. And maybe you can connect to that now. Um, is there any question in the audience? Uh, if so, speak louder so we don't have to repeat. Otherwise, it's just going to be me. But, um, okay, yes? Well, besides speaking English with the actress, because like tonight well, I'm very like lousy in this. So what was the biggest challenge for you uh, making the film? I think that the, the story with making films, it's just my third, my third feature and I've not... I feel uh, that I'm more a writer than a director sometimes, and you don't capitalize the experience with films. So every film is like the challenge, like you're not sure that you're going to make it. And this one, even if it's like with costume and period movie, it was exactly like the same uh, tetany <laughs> that I had the first day. But then I had like the... When you're pretty sure of the actors uh, that you pick, that you decide like to make alliance with, uh, there's something very softer. So... Maybe the, 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 the most challenging thing was to keep in the film the zones of mystery that, that had to be kept. And this is like uh, something that you have to be a little brave with because like every time you want to be like, you want to make things a little bit clearer because you feel that the film is difficult and you have like to explain, but you have to keep the, 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 the mystery sometimes and to let the spectator feel the mystery. So it was like the biggest challenge to me. Um, yes. So first of all, he loves the film, and then you. He said he loved the film. Yeah. Did you hear? He loved the film. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's a question about the father. Uh, the scene with Andre's father. The scene so with Andre's father. That's funny that you ask because he he's my father actually. <laughs> I know. I was looking. You know, when I say like the trick of the of the inconscient, I was looking for an actor who who speaks Yiddish. I was like, does I have like, do I have a cheap one? <laughs> it was my father. <laughs> and so <laughs> he's not an actor at all. He's a translator. Obviously, I don't like have the same skill. But he's a, uh, and so he speaks Yiddish. And then I never knew uh, till the end, till the very, very day of the shooting. I didn't know exactly what, what he wanted to say, what he would be, what, what he would say. When I say like keeping the mystery of those scenes, and it, you have to be like not the first film to do it because like everyone keeps like asking your questions. How do I dress him? Uh, what does it mean? Like the producer is like, are you sure this scene is necessary because it's super expensive? And so you have to be pretty sure that you want to keep like the mystery till, till the end. And so he says in Yiddish things that are inspired by like a, a Flaubert book that is like coming on and off in the film. Like it's from Salambo and it's uh, talking about like the, pro the promiscuity of people and, and men in the war and like in the promiscuity in a very like sometimes homosexual way, which is like a, a, a theme that uh, the film did not follow till the end. I cut it like uh, while editing because it was too much and like too much, but uh, it's still, <laughs> yeah, literally. But uh, so it's a, it's a very um, important maybe scene to me and I don't know why, but it had to be in this film and it's the moment where guilt and tra trauma just uh, reappears in Corbin's head. And it's about like what it is to be keeping inside very, very secret and dark moments. Like, yeah. I, can you elaborate on the meaning of the title? Absolutely. It's not the first time I've, be, I've been asked. She's ready. <laughs> it's a... Uh, I really wanted like the, the spectator to be, you know what it's about a planetarium? A planetarium is this place, the fake place, when you can see artificial lights, when you're kept in dark. And it's not only like this amazing scene in the Nicolas Frey uh, 
Rebel Without a Cause, Planetarium scene that is like one of my favorite. It's just that you are entering a place that you know that it's a fake, but you still want to believe in those stars. Stars that means also like looking at actresses or actors. And it's also when you know the name of the constellations, you can name those and you can see those. But you kn when you don't know the names, it's a super like uh, philosophical thing like Kant, when you don't know the names, you just look like sparkling things that may be beautiful and may be like threatening sometimes. And it's exactly um, the disposition I wanted the spectator to be <coughs> looking at the film. Absolutely. Like, the beginning of the film is in a very like in a way, very nat naturalistic uh, sky or look-alike sky. And the last one is a pathetic, fake one. This is very like profoundly uh, moving to me because I feel that we could... I really wanted the film to say that we have to believe in cinema, which is like the most pathetic but beautiful thing to believe in and worth believing in compared to other very bad fictions that homophobia or anti-Semitism could be. It's a good storytelling cinema. We have time for two more questions. I see someone here. So all the characters in the movie are outcasts or foreigners. How important was it for you to represent like minorities and, and foreigners in the film? I n thank you very much for this question. I never noticed, actually, <laughs> you know, I, I don't do psychoanalysis. I should do, actually. I think now I'm like taking a decision tonight. But uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a daughter of two immigrants. My father was born in Poland, my mother was born in Morocco. Uh, I'm Jewish, I'm a woman. I'm very connected to the destiny of minority, like the, the, the talking of the minor minorities. Not, and I don't know why, but I feel always connected to, uh, to outcasts and people that don't have like, the, the, the voice to. So I, I feel that all the characters that connect to me are, and even like for the, as, a, as a script writer, it's a very good tool. I mean, because those people are orphans, they don't have past, or you cannot, you can just imagine that they have past that you can build, or you can feel, you know, when she says, like, you have an accent too, you're not just French, and he says, yeah, yes, I was not born French. It's a kind of mystery that is connected to the past of each character, <coughs> and I really feel that uh, it's those characters that should be like heroes in films, yeah. There was someone in the back with a <coughs> white sweatshirt. Yeah, that's you, yeah. Because there's a noise here, I could not quite understand. Is it a question about the eye? The sister? It's white at one point. Oh, the... the, the ah, the eyebrow! The <laughs> yes. Like, okay, thank you for noticing this. I'm very fetishistic. <laughs> I'm like, I love fetishism. I feel it's always... Con I don't know why. <laughs> it's like that. And I feel that I really wanted this character to be special in a very, very, like, visual way. Like, and in French, it's called, like, plebal plebaldism which is a very, very like simple disease. It's just that you have like a depigmentation of one of your, you know, like I, I'm in love with Suzanne Zontag and she has like this amazing like white hair somewhere. I think it's super like, it, it reminds me how different sometimes people are in the, and I really wanted Lily Rose Depp's character to be uh, connected to those uh, young actresses like Drew Barrymore. <laughs> I had like the, the idea of Drew Barrymore becoming a very, very famous actress at eight or six and being like, alcoholic in a very, very childish moment. I don't know why. I wanted like Lily Rose Depp to drink in the film. She was like, you know, she's always drinking alcohol and she has this special thing. And I really wanted to notice it like in a visual way. So that's why we did that. It was pretty like not simple to do because like every day we should do, we would do that, which is like super not nice for the actress. But I really like, it was important to me. <laughs> Sometimes you don't know. Okay. Well, I think maybe we have time for one last question. So. Uh, yes. <laughs> He's at, like, what about those actresses that were collaborating in a way during the war? It's what you mean? In the 40s? In the 40s. Mm -hmm. That, you know what, it's funny because the actress she's talking to, her name is Amira Kazar, she's an amazing actress, and she, and the, the name of the character is called Eva Said. Okay. So it's an Arabic name, which is in France, like, super complicated. There's a lot of Islamophobia and, like, people hate Muslims, not only here, but, like, and so I really wanted like the actress to have, uh, there's a reason why I'm t telling that, I, I swear. And I really wanted the actress to have like this patronyme because I wanted her to be like, it was like a pseudonym. And I wanted her to take this pseudonym because it was like a dreamy, uh, a dreamy name, like Said, like a, like a, a princess of the 1001 nights, uh, you know. 
and it moved me. And also, like when I see this actress in the beginning of the film, Amira Kaza, she has this little, like, like I do, you know, like this little thing here, as if she were like, you know, eating well during the war and working and being like this kind, those kind of actress that was collaborating with the enemy. And like the, the final film is definitely a propaganda film. It's like a very bad one and they are supposed to be like in a very cheesy, you know, fiction in a way. So there's not a, a it's not like a political uh, uh, statement that I wanted to take. It's just that I'm, it's happening that I collect all those informations while making the end of the film and the beginning. But I definitely wanted to say that even that was worth making it. So this is what I want to say. Okay. Maybe I did not answer to your question. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, one last question, but then we, we're going to be locked inside at midnight, so. <laughs> it's fine. Um, yes, fair. Okay, so can you talk about the Jewish identity? Um. I feel that the film is, uh, I don't know, you, you could explain, like, I, don't know, I do not have shrink. I should go to therapy. <laughs> but there's, like, <laughs> definitely, like... In uh, New York, for sure. <laughs> I'm very happy, no, but one thing I can say, I'm very happy that we can speak of it, like, openly. In France, I would never say that. Not about the therapy, about the Jewishness. Like, I would never say like, let's talk about the Jew like the Jewish the identity of this. I don't know why. And like, even like when a, a, a newspaper asked me like to answer some questions about Natalie Portman, I didn't know like I did like a lot of paraphrase to say that that maybe our Jewishness, Jewish identity was a bond between each other. And then the guy said like, maybe you are going to say Jewish. It's okay. We can't say Jewish here. So I was like very relieved. <laughs> uh, and I feel like everything like it's so part of my, you are talking about minority. Jewish is like, to me, like as minority, I think that I'm more connected to the minorities talk, women, Jewish, and uh, like homosexual in a way, even if I'm straight. But uh, to me, the film is totally connected to the destiny of European uh, Jewish identities. It's like Corbin's uh, trip, Corbin's journey in the film is totally paradigmatical of what like uh, uh, Jewish people experienced during the war. But uh, also in a way in the melancholia and a certain like, uh, I would be very interested to read things about the, like the Jewish culture in films because I'm pretty sure that I'm really connected to that. Like I'm sorry to be that like, like that, but I really wanted to be like someone special, but I think I'm connected to my, to my culture in a way. We, we do have to wrap it up. Uh, are we going to be locked inside? Thank you very much. I'm sorry to be so sad. Thank you. Thank you so much.